Second and 14 now. And underneath, over the middle, that's a catch. And a, well, close to the first down yeah. for Brock Ralph at the 41. And in this, in this point, in this point of the game, I would think close enough that, that Paul Lapolis would go ahead and go for it. Brock Ralph does recognize zone well here. He, he sees that there's going to be an open spot. And he'll just break off his route and sit in it. Well, that was right at game time. We found out about Louis Dakota. On the other side of the coin, I think a lot of us wondered what kind of Ticat team shows up when they're not sure where their team's going to be in a year. And all the focus this week was on the future of the Tiger Cats, just short, third inches. And Marcel Belfay has somehow been able to make yeah. sure his players have blocked that all out. Interesting interview there with Bob Young at halftime. And I don't know, got the sense that he was saying that as long as it's the West Harbor decision by the council that they're off the table and looking at other options. If they decide to change that vision, they would talk again. That's the sense I got from the interview. Stephen Giles was stopped on a third down gamble in the first half, stuck by Jamal Johnson. This is an easy push behind Abi Khan and company for a first down. See what he did, though, the difference? The Jamal Johnson, he was patiently picking his way down the line of scrimmage, trying to find a hole. That time he took it and just followed his center and went, <laughs> that's it, man. No hesitation here. Not with Jamal Johnson lurking around. Led the league in tackles last year with 108 and leads again this season. And has made noise tonight. But Bombers have a first down inside the Hamilton 40-yard line. And Fred Reed straight ahead. Big pickup by Reed. Toss down. The ball came loose. Does Garrett McIntyre have it? Or does Floyd says he does? Let's find out. It is Hamilton football. And there he is, the man who stuffed Stephen Giles on the final play last week at Ivor Wind comes up with a loose football. All right, tough break for Paul Apolice's squad because they had a good drive going and we're in that field goal range. I'll be, although who kicks it is a bit of a mystery. Now, was he down or not? Ball looks like oh. it's out before Fred Reed is down by contact. Boy, and his leg is awkwardly underneath the tackler there. The blues it was Albert Smith who made the hit. So Albert Smith has the sack hey, and a forced fumble. And there's Garrett McIntyre, who Marcel Belfay has been said was the steadiest of his D linemen for the first third of the year. Markway McDaniel to catch. Taken down by Clint Kent. Pick up of close to five. But for the Bombers, I see a little jump in their step defensively as well, and maybe just a few first downs for Stephen Giles has given them a little sense of optimism here, but Kavis Reed needs to see a couple of two and outs to try and gain some momentum from his defense. Four turnover the night for Winnipeg. And second and five. Over the middle, the crosser. And Mark Way McDaniel dropped at the 40 yard line. Right at the first down stick. Sixth catch of the night for number six. Kevin Glenn immediately knows it's man to man because he sees this. There's DeAndre Cobb and Joe Lobendon. Watch how Lobendon is going to go out to cover DeAndre Cobb. Now that's where he knows now the middle's open. So I've got a crosser in the middle, no middle linebacker there, and I've got man-to-man. -man. It's tough to cover a guy man-to-man -man who's running hard across the middle like that. You're always in a chase position. And that's what I'm talking about with Kevin Glenn and his decisions. I mean, he saw that middle linebacker move, knew where to go, bam, big game. 45. Darcy Brown, Chris Bauman check in as tight ends. First and 10, a pump from Glenn who wanted more, and that takes off. And he'll be dropped at the 44-yard line. Short pickup for Kevin Glenn. Bernard Hicks on the tackle. Let's give you another angle of that decision because, you know, Lavendon's here. He, he's going he's gonna to vacate. And now Kevin Glenn knows he has that crosser coming from McDaniels. So it's not the guy that Lavendon is covering that he's worried about. He's saying in a man-to-man -man defense on a crosser, almost impossible to try and stay with your guy. Quick decision, good throw off the read from the middle linebacker. 
Second and seven. Glenn looking downfield. He's looking deep, and he has a receiver. There's Matt Carter. He's turned it into yes. a keeper up there. Yes, he is. Good size. Katie McGrath, 6'1", 199, and good speed. And maybe the most enthusiastic touchdown celebration a week ago. Yeah, he was pretty pumped, wasn't he, get his first. Another double move, too, that fools the Winnipeg Blue Bomber. They are jumping the first cut and the first move. Kevin Glenn, patience, has time to throw. And drops it in there, right over the right shoulder. Kevin Glenn with a 34-yard pickup to Matt Carter in the first down. Glenn steps up again and takes off. How do you escape that, then? Slides down at the 20, another first down for Kevin Glenn, who we don't see run much, but <laughs> he's shown some escapability tonight. Yeah, he has, because I thought he the pocket had collapsed around him here. I mean, I was going to about to talk about how that was really the first good aggressive pass rush by the Bombers, and he found a way to sneak out of there. And a good move in the open field here, a little shake and bake back and forth, and then cuts back inside on Courtney Smith. Who is right now trying to pick up his shoes and his spat and his elbow pad? And I didn't know you could shake and bake like that, Mr. Glenn. Third run for 25 yards, only 10 carries for 62 coming into the game. And Kevin Glenn looks into the end zone, and this one intercepted. And it'll be brought out by the safety, Brady Brown. Second pick of the game by the Bombers secondary. This is a big one. And Brady Brown celebrates his first. Shop at Safeway. Find out how you can create your own plays at NissanArmchairHero.com. There's Brady Brown. There's Arlan Bruce. There's going to be two routes. Usually a safety when he gets this kind of route here. He stays in the middle, but watch how Brady Brown is going to favor the guy who has 27 catches, 469 in the last two games. He's saying, forget about that middle seam. I'm going over to number one to help out the player trying to cover him. First career play. CFL interception for the University of Manitoba Bison product was on that Vanier Cup championship team. And it's the Island of Folks in Maple Ridge, BC. Well, it's, it's the throwback and Brady Brown going with the 70s mustache. That works. Yeah, I saw somebody else wear one of those. Yeah, I used to have one of those. It's <laughs> long gone. But, you know, I like the play because this is premeditated. This is something they talked about during the week because of what Arlan Bruce has done. You know, he wasn't back there for the big play early in the game, but on the goal line down there, he favored Bruce in a big way and got the pick. Second and two for Giles, as a Darius Coleman for the first down. Dropped at the 35-yard line. Tackle made by Marquise Bowman. Giles is starting to get something going here. There is Bowman. Catches with his hands, quick turn. And there's those yak yards we were talking about. First TD of the season last week in Hamilton. His best game, 139 yards against the Tiger Cats. First down catch there. The Bombers are threatening now. Remember, they don't have a field goal kicker. We're not sure if they have a field goal kicker. They're offside on this play as Giles is in trouble and he is dropped. I think it was Bowman. There is Bowman. Just looked like he took a yeah. Half a step prior to the snap, and I'm not sure if he saw a defensive lineman move possibly, but yeah, he well, there you go. There's your answer. Mark Heath Knowlton had made the tackle again. Otis Floyd will survey. Do they take the penalty or take the play and decline? Offside. What did they number 12? The penalties decline. Second down. In fact, it is a sack, a loss of a couple, so Knowlton chalks up the sack. That active linebacking core of the Tie Cats that tallied 269 tackles last year. They're on pace for over 300 tackles this season. Knowlton, Johnson, and Floyd digging in as Winnipeg looks at second and 12. Giles dancing around, takes off, looking for the first down stick. He'll get there. Out of bounds at the Hamilton 25. Well, and that's good speed because because Otis Floyd, he, he had it in high gear, and he was coming. I mean, 
he, he shows blitz at the line of scrimmage. Then he drops the opposite direction. Sees Giles step up. Now he is on the dead tear to cut him off. Watch the, the left of your screen. Look at this. And Giles just outruns that angle. And a smart play by 3-5 to not hit him hard when he's out of bounds there and take a penalty. Giles was 7 for 60 on the ground last week. At Ivor win a 13-yard first down run there. They pick to Terrence Edwards, give it to Fred Reed. And that's a clutch tackle on the play by Matt Kirk. It looked like Fred Reed was eyeing the end zone. Those split seconds make such a big difference, and, and the offense looks completely different right now than it did under Buck Pierce. And, you know, Buck Pierce hasn't had game reps for three straight weeks, and Giles, it just looks like a completely different offense. So the baseball hat, I'm sure, will stay on for the rest of this game. And it'll get back there for Buck Pierce. But in the meantime, a good situation for Paul Lapelise to have two that can play. And he did say, Stephen Giles proved he can start in this league. Here's Reed again. And Reed lowers the shoulder and has a first down. Marquis Dolt again. Oh, that's good football. That's just good football. Jason Shivers comes up. He's throwing his body in there. He doesn't care. He's trying to make a stop. And there's good football at the point of impact here. Yeah. I love that. Good on Fred Reed. Just lowered his shoulder. He's not a big guy, but he saw the hits coming and lowered his shoulder and got the first down. 46 yards on the night for 40 Fred Reed. And a bomber first down. Chris Davis, the former cat, unable to turn the corner. 25's all over the field for him. Yeah, he is, and so is Floyd. And, you know, but this is what the offense for the Bombers are making them do. They're making them go sideline to sideline, and that's going to pay off as the game goes on. It, it's tough to, to gather yourself after having to chase down these running backs and receivers from... 65 yards to the left, 65 yards back to the right. And then you have to go and line up in 20 seconds, try and catch your breath and run with them again. So a three-yard gain for Davis. Second and seven. Bobby Khan parks out the signals from center. And Giles to fade into the end zone. Bowman, touchdown! by Brady Brown. A nice throw by Giles to leave it outside and let Bowman go and get it. And it looked like Jeff Tisdale at the end of the play timed his jump poorly. A little premature here. He goes up right now to try and get it. The ball's not quite there, and it drops right in the hands. But there is Bowman. That's a perfect throw. Fifth touchdown pass of the year for Stephen Giles. Like Renault with his second convert in relief duty. Bombers close the gap. 